So we are back on live again, and I have two guests uh, who recently made a big IG. Uh, we've been talking about big IG, so we can ask them what it was like to make big IG. And before that, I don't want to introduce you to uh, this is Nando. Nando is originally from Zambia, and he's an architect in Tokyo. And yeah, we'll ask about your experience um, with SafeCast and Kelsey. Kelsey is a chief community officer at Fab Cafe, and she's been based in Tokyo. She's originally from Florida, US. Okay. So, Nando, do you want to start uh, your experience? How did you get to know SafeCast first? Yeah. Um, the, 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 the first reason I actually got involved with SafeCast was uh, the, the idea of uh, community and uh, the idea of citizen design science, specifically um, the idea of uh, making uh, technology more accessible and more open. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, coming from uh, Zambia, where I was born in Southern Africa, um, that train of thought is still quite new and evolving. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Safe has done some projects there, so it was exciting to actually uh, get a hands-on experience. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Kelsey? How did you get involved with SafeCast? I think you've been with SafeCast since 2017. Yeah, so yeah. actually, um, so I've been at Fab Cafe since 2017. Uh, and, you know, that's whenever I really got to know SafeCast well. But come to think of it, actually, the first time that I visited Japan nine years ago, mm -hmm. the way that I found Fab Cafe and the way that I found SafeCast was through Sean Bonner, who is a colleague of my previous cafe boss. And so oh, Sean said, you know, we set up the SafeCast office and they just opened this great cafe downstairs. Won't you come and, you know, talk to them about espresso and talk to them about coffee. And then that's actually how I <laughs> came to, to start working here. And then I found out about SafeCast and I was very passionate about their citizen science uh, mm -hmm. activities. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I was interestingly attracted to all the work that they were doing. Right. And you were involved with the Mirai camp at Morning Museum? Right. Yeah. So uh, over it? the summer, mm -hmm. uh, the SafeCast team goes to Raikon uh, Summer Camp and uh, helps a group of students put together a Kegaigi. Mm -hmm. So the Kegaigi is more of an educational tool, but they can actually take it out and measure the radiation around. And you'd actually be surprised some of the like, not concrete, but like a flooring mm -hmm. around this space is a little bit radioactive. So it's really fun to see the kids face light up when they can actually use the tool that they made themselves. Right. Okay, and I think you have your KGI, I mean, big IG you made on your own. Yeah, so this is the one that I made myself, <laughs> and um, maybe I'll hand this to you. <laughs> so basically, uh, it was my first time doing soldering as well. Yeah. Um, so my first time, like, really dealing with hardware in general, and it was so much fun. <laughs> Actually, uh, Joe and I built it together. So right. I got to spend like a good day and a half with him learning about, okay. uh, you know, the mechanics of this guy. Okay. And we also created uh, a custom design yep. for the plates. So actually there's three plates, sorry, four plates, sorry, three plates here. Um, and some of them have the design on both sides. And the most magical moment is that after you get done putting it all together and then you flip the switch and then you... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you turn it on and you see the safe cast sign go mm -hmm. on. And you're like, ah, it's working. Yeah. And then after some moments, you'll start hearing the clicking. I can hear it now. And you kind of feel like you're, you know, a member of this long line of people who yeah. have been making the and mm -hmm. feeling empowered by right. what they made themselves. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Well, by the way, this is a 10th anniversary uh, special edition of uh, Big IG. So uh, it's actually uh, designed by Ian Lina, my one of my friends, uh, who is a graphic designer based in Tokyo. Thank you to Ian. He was not able to join today, but yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, and Nando, you have the one from actually this. We have several versions, and this is is this the one you actually made? Uh, this is not the specific no. one. I okay. Made. Um, my one at home right now. Right. Okay. But um, yeah, this. I, I got the chance to um, put it uh, together here um, in the office. Um, but I think the great thing about this was that um, when I got the chance to take it back home, mm -hmm. um, so I traveled to uh, Zambia, South Africa, and uh, Ethiopia, mm -hmm. um, getting some readings there. And the, the, the greatest thing was actually coming to contact and talking to people about it. Uh, we had a, a big 
discussion at that time, this was 2019, mm -hmm. about the nuclear industry in Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, being able to use a Bigagi um, as an as a entry point to talk to people and discuss the various um, topics around it was extremely amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's been a fun roller coaster right. uh, ride, um, and it just keeps on getting better. Mm. What was the people's reaction there when they first saw it? Well, you know, how did you explain? <laughs> well, you, you know, the, I mean, in some places it was definitely great. Um, one story I do remember was that when I was in Ethiopia mm -hmm. at the airport, um, they actually <laughs> thought this was a bomb. And um, because at, at the time, Ethiopia's uh, main power sources uh, are either through uh, coal and hydro. Mm. So uh, explaining this to the um, police officers right. at the airport <laughs> took me a couple of hours. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> that was an experience. So okay. um, yeah, if you're ever flying for Bidagi, I, I recommend you have a, a good um, instruction manual just explaining <laughs> to the book pictures what right. it actually does. But it's been fantastic. Yeah. Um, they were really interested in like how it works. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I'll probably say is that because everything could be um, built by yourself, it's really easy to actually explain to someone mm. what each part actually means. So, mm. yeah. Okay. And you, uh, okay. And sorry, we have one more guest actually, uh, Rolf. Uh, he is an artist based in Nara and joining us now. Hi, Rolf, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Hi, Rolf. Hello. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll continue and when Rob can hear us, he can join. Um, yeah, so you measured radiation in Zambia and Ethiopia, these two countries. And South, South, South Africa as well. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and did, what was your findings? Um, well, generally the, 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 the findings of Africa had been, uh, some of them had been picked up uh, Mm -hmm. um, but uh, fortunately, uh, I use quite a lot of public transportation, mm -hmm. uh, so I was able to just add additional information to that. In uh, Zambia, we had some uh, some good relationships in, in the past. Uh, this yeah. 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 So, can you hear me now? And what was your findings? Um, okay. Wow. So there are already people on the ground who's okay. measured before you. Yes. Okay. It, it just wasn't that the information was up to date. Okay. And then, uh, the Ethiopia trip, I think, was uh, a bit more new. I don't think there were there weren't readings there. Uh, for that. Okay. So you started the history there. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's great. Okay. I think can you, Rob? Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, can great. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So I heard that you made kegaigi. Uh, I did uh, many, many things, I think. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, well, tell, me, tell us about your uh, safe cast and yourself. How did you get involved in what you do? Yeah, we, um, me and my partner, we went, uh, we were living in Tokyo first, and then we know already Peter. And when the uh, tsunami and the earthquakes struck, we went the next day with journalists to the disaster zone. We had many troubles, but luckily Peter kept us an uh, update. So we could call in to Peter and to tell him what's going on with the nuclear power plant. And from that on, um, yeah, we started a kind of um, relation with uh, Safecast. Mm -hmm. And we continued that. And we stayed one and a half year in Fukushima in, um, in Aizu Wakamatsu, where we uh, built a uh, prototype of a data center. We Safecast came over there. We built uh, many, uh, how do you call them, Bigaiki at that time. And then later I got involved with the Bigaiki Nano development. And from that on, much more. And I can show you other things, like for example, here. Yep. So we modif I modified Bigaiki Nanos <laughs> like this. So we can have much more power, we can have much more possibilities to, to transmit the data, not only recording on the SD drive and upload, the SD drive is here, and upload it, but we could send it by Wi-Fi and BLE. So after that version, we made, I can show you, 
all different kind of versions, this test, and then another test. And then finally, we made this small board for the Big Guy Geekast that Joe is now using with ASB in Fukushima. Uh -huh. And from that part on, at the same time, kind of similar development, we started to do the Big Guy Key. Uh, that time, it was not called even Big Guy Key. It was called integrated hardware or something like that. Just a simple board and people could buy it. And it had an, uh, an red beer processor. And that processor, unfortunately, we couldn't get it anymore. So we started to think about how to make it easier. So Peter came up with the idea for the Big Aiki Raku and the Big Aiki Sen. It's basically a display with all the hardware built in and it fits on a prototype board. This is the one of the first prototypes we made. Then later, we came to this version of the board. It's a much simpler board. The only, it can be put together in 15 minutes and it's hardly any components. And a little bit level up, it's this version. And finally, we came up last week with a board like this. And it's easy to solder and easy to make. And Peter will show you later. Um, versions i oh wait i have one here too this is the new prototype dance it, dance it, dance it. it will come uh, i mean it should should be this is the yeah big i get that big i get send yeah peter yeah. showed it and this is the working one the one peter has is so, still in progress yeah, but it's, uh, it's very simple. Yeah. But also this one, the big advantage is you don't need an external, um, how would yeah. you say that, uh, upload. Simple. It can upload by itself. Mm. And the registration is very easy. You click the bottom on the top, and you see a QR code, and the QR code goes automatically to the data of the sensors. Mm -hmm. This most of this work, uh, the software is done by uh, Robin, Robin Snyder. He did a lot of work on it. Let's see. Okay. It's a very simple machine and it's a very easy to assemble. And um, Peter should probably explain a little bit more what we're going to do with it. So how, how, how would you, comparing to uh, Big IG, how easy it, is it? Like how, how long would it take for people to make maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes maximum 10 15 and minutes yes yeah. this, this whole thing really yeah. wow how, how long did you take to make one for yourself well it depends <laughs> all the well, times i, I miss bolded stuff <laughs> right you started from the soldering lesson right yeah, so it yeah. took you like i think that like four hours four hours mm. is, you know, if you're going well, making good yeah. progress, yeah. four hours is about right. Yeah. Okay, so that's how it's easy to make this one. Ah, that's great. And it's also probably going to be much cheaper and the parts are much updated it. And because the, the, some of the parts is hard to get and the suppliers, they, um, for example, add a fruit, they keep changing the, the model. So we have to modify the boards all the time. But with this design, the uh, with the M5 stack, that's the small square uh, display you saw, was introduced by Ray. By the way, it was wonderful. He he gave us this idea, okay. and it's much easier to source the uh, the hardware. And also, we can do much more with it because it has a lot more memory. It has a lot more capability. Rob, uh, can yeah? you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. I just put up the uh, big ID cost data, which is the data that uh, that the project. Can you just talk about what what is it, you know what you see here on the screen? Uh, hold on, I don't see your screen. Um, okay, well, you can see it. Your sharing screen, it says, so it should be. Okay, so, so maybe I'll talk about it. Oh, I, I, you want me to show it, Peter? No, no, I'm already showing it, but I'm not sure why you can't uh, see it. Uh, because I'm still on. 
or so, so, so Rob, I'll, I'll just, I'm not sure why you can't see, but I just wanted to share with you. We're talking about the Big Aggie cast, and we posted a link in the um, YouTube channel. Uh, if you click on that, you will see exactly the same thing. And uh, what this shows is this is actually, you know, today we have been following, uh, you know, the, the SafeCast team. You can actually see where they have been driving today. You can see what the radiation levels have been. So we started at, you know, at, at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, we, we stopped somewhere in the middle, but uh, you can see all the way through. And currently they just have recently reached the uh, area around the Daiichi plant itself. And you can see the radi radiation levels are gone up like two and a half microsieverts an hour. And so this is what the big IGI cost is doing. It basically real time uh, transmits out the data so that we can do things like you're seeing here. And Rob, uh, an uh, intern we had, we have a lot of interns that actually are in, have interned with us over the last 10 years. One of our interns in Holland, uh, uh, Rob, help me with the name, uh, uh, has been working on this. So we just wanted to show this. And I think uh, Emo is now showing the actual big IGI that has the big IGI cost on it. So you get an idea of, of what that looks like. And so it keeps on transmitting and it allows, you know, basically allows us to follow what's happening in real time. But it also is a great way, uh, you know, to get a sense of, you know, how things change throughout the landscape that we've been driving through today. Mm -hmm. So just back to you, Emmy. Yep. So Peter, today it's raining. So it, is it true that, that we have higher radiation when it's raining in general? It's a very good question. Ask the question to Joe. <laughs> okay. Uh, as the or Joe, can you guys hear us? Yes. Okay. So uh, uh, video is disabled for us. Can you enable our video? I can, I can hear you. But our video is disabled, so maybe enable our video. Yeah, you can. You can talk. We can hear you. Sure. Okay. So, yes, so today it's raining. So how how would you say the radiation level is compared to a sunny day? Um. You know, I, I don't, Joe, do you think it makes much, uh, much difference? Yes, the... it makes a little bit of difference. Um, the, it, today, the rain is coming from a fairly low altitude. So the, it's basically covering some of the ground. So the radiation is probably a little bit lower than it normally would be. Uh, if on days when the rain comes from either from thunderstorms and very high altitude, it contains even more radiation sometimes. So it could be a little bit higher. So, but the changes from the rain in a level that's as high as it is here are pretty minimal. I mean, in places like Tokyo, we can see an increase of 20, 25 percent on a, on, a, on a hot rainy day or a day where the, when the rain has got uh, material in it. But up here, it's the same amount added, but it's a small percentage of what's actually out on the ground. Up here. Yeah. And we'll just point out we're in front of uh, Fukushima Daiichi. Yeah. And what's the radiation level here? <laughs> um, looks like it's about 2.5 microsieverts an about, hour here. Yeah, about, about, two, about five normally. About 2.5 microsieverts an hour here, very close by. It's, it's double that. We're on the yeah. side of the road right here. So, and we'll be be talking more about this in a little while. Okay. How far away are you now? From, from where? From Daiichi. Yeah. Uh, we're well. We're at the, the the guard post. So the the this is kind of the entrance. We're about. 1200 meters from the reactors yeah okay. so like a few hundred meters from the entry gate of the yeah. of Fukushima Daiichi on the entry road okay yeah and we'll, we'll talk to you later soon yeah yeah okay good are we gonna get out shortly yeah so uh, I think we're gonna go on to the next program thank you Kelsey and Nando and Bob <laughs>